Hey, my name is Alper and I'm a composer, producer and a guitarist. I've taught at Berkeley College of Music and Berkeley Online and I'd like to show you how to take a song idea and start developing that into a full song. What usually happens is that we come up with a chord progression idea or a melody and we leave it in our voice memos or somewhere in our laptops and we don't develop it. So what I'm gonna do today is take a chord progression idea that I recorded on guitar and I'll be adding drums, bass, and keyboards on it. So through this step-by-step -step tutorial, you're gonna be seeing what it's like to take a simple song idea and how to transform that into a full song. Let's get started. The first thing that I'm going to do is take this guitar recording, which was already recorded to a click. By the way, recording to a click is very important for this to work, because if you don't record to a click, then we will have to warp the recording, but that's for another lesson. I'm just going to make a loop out of this guitar recording at this point, because it is only four bars long, as you can see, bar number one, two, three, and four, and it's going to stop after four bars. First, let's listen to it, and then we're going to start looping it. Cool, so since it is cutting at the end of bar four, I'm going to zoom out here and then uh, going to go to the upper right corner and drag to the right and this is going to loop it like this. And we can listen from uh, the end of the first cycle going into the second cycle just to make sure that transition from the end of this loop into this one is smooth and seamless. Cool, so we can definitely work with that. And let me zoom out some more and loop this a few more times. Okay. Up next, we want to add a track for drums. So typically what you want to nail down first are the rhythmic parts, as this keeps the time for the rest of the song and it makes it really easy to add other instruments going forward. So that's why we're going to get started with the drums. To create the drums, first we click on this plus button and it's going to have me uh, add a track and I'm going to add a MIDI software instrument track. I'm going to hit create and then automatically Logic is going to pop up its library. I'm going to go to the drum kit section where I have all the available drum presets and I can select literally any of these kits and I'm going to select the sunset kit. So right now we have selected a kit and I can get rid of the library over here. And now uh, all I have to do is create a new MIDI region. And to do that, I'm going to control and click and I'm going to say create MIDI region. So this is going to create a completely empty MIDI region and now I can enter or delete notes. So all I have to do is double click and this will go into the piano roll which contains all the components of my drum kit. And I would like to work with something very simple. So I'm thinking just a kick and snare pattern. Uh, the drummers uh, might be aware of this. If you're not a drummer, a very easy way to get started with writing kick and snare is that you could put your kick on beats one and three and snare on two and four. And what this does is it creates a very simple straight groove. And since our guitar recording is was also recorded to straight groove, then this should work. All I have to do is uh, hold command and this is going to enable the pencil tool. And from there, I can just click once. If you want to get rid of this note, you hold command again, but now you double click and this will get rid of it. So hold command, click once, and it's going to create. Now I'm going to zoom into my bar here. Uh, you can see the beat number within my bar, beat one, beat two, beat three, and beat four. These are uh, signifying the quarter notes. So beat one has the kick. Like we said, I'm going to add a kick to beat three 
And then on the vertical side, you can see the components, just like we saw the kick here. And now I'm going to add a snare section. So I'm going to select really any of these. Let's do the snare center and add this to beat two and beat four. And now let's listen to it. Cool. This should actually be fine. All I have to do is now minimize my region and we can just loop this and uh, let this ride and see how it's working with the guitar so far. Cool. And from there, I'm going to add a bass track. So I'm going to click on plus again, software instrument, and this time I'm going to go to bass section and I'm going to really can select any of these over here, any of these presets, I'm going to select warm and clear. And same process with the drums, just like we did in drums, control click, create media region, and I can expand this a bit more. This is going to be a bit of a more work. Uh, in my chord progression that I have in the guitar, I have three chords. I have one bar of D minor, one bar of A minor, and two bars of G major. I want to keep it simple with the bass at this point. So I want the bass to play just the root and the fifth of each chord. And if you've never written bass before, a great way to get started, a surefire way, you can't go wrong with this when you're writing bass, just play your bass notes when the drummer is playing the kick. Or in other words, place your bass notes where beats one and three are happening. And in higher levels and more complicated situations, you can add ornaments and you can play around with different beats, but this is a great way to get started to create a solid rhythmic foundation. So since my first chord is D minor, I'm going to go to bar one and I'm just going to drop the root. So a note of D over here, let's make it play for the entire quarter note. Cool. Skip beat two, add the fifth to beat three. Remember we were adding the bass to beats one and three because that's where the drummer is playing the kick. So notice how I'm not going to be playing any bass during the snare hits on beats two and four, only on one and three. And that creates a solid rhythmic foundation for the rest of the song. And if you like, you could also take any of the notes uh, higher or lower octaves. So I'm actually going to take this into a lower octave. I feel like that could work nicely. And then uh, what's cool is that the next chord is going to be A minor. So I could actually continue to have that A over here. And then on B3, I can add the fifth, which is going to be E. So now here's what this is going to sound like. Cool. And on bars three and four, I have G major. So all I have to do is add G to the first beat and the third beat. Let's add D. And then uh, if you want the exact same notes, all you have to do is select your notes. You can do copy and paste, literally command C or command V, or even easier, you can hold the option key, click and drag. And this makes it far easier to copy and paste your notes. Here's what the whole thing sounds like so far. Cool. And now I can also loop this part and this should also work nicely with the rest. Last but not the least, we want to add a keyboard part. 
I'm going to click on plus again, create a MIDI software instrument. The cool thing about this is the default preset for any software uh, instrument track and logic is going to be classic electric piano, which is a pretty cool sound. And since this is already a keyboard, I might as well just stay here and just write out the notes here as well. So I'm going to control click again and create a MIDI region. And then I'm going to just input the chords in here. The first chord was D minor. D. I can hold option to just copy this. Or you can also hold command to add the notes. So I'm just going to uh, lengthen this note. If you feel like this is clashing with the bass and the guitar chords, you can also take these chords to higher octaves and lower octaves. I feel like this might be a little too low. So I'm going to actually click and drag this whole thing up. So this will actually uh, transpose. Yeah, it sounds better. And the second bar was A minor. A. C. E. So we could even go higher or lower here. Let's try going lower. just copy this whole thing. Again, we don't really need to reinvent the wheel, so. Cool. So something that you might have noticed is that the keyboard is pretty much playing the same voicings with the guitar and it might even be stepping on the toes of the bass. So since guitar and bass are taking care of the majority of the chords here, we don't really need the keyboards to play the full chords. So we can always delete parts and a very good way to get started with this is to delete the root of each of the chords. So I'm going to go and delete the root of each of these chords here. And this is going to leave the third and the fifth of each chord. So here's what that sounds like. You could even get more fancy with this, like you could even let this note hang for a while and you could also take any of these notes to a higher octave or a lower octave if you want to play with the voicings. This is more of a higher level uh, thing to you know think about, but you know if you want to just quickly play around with it. I'm actually going to take that to a lower octave. So we could definitely play around with the chords too. And since this cycle sounds good, I'm going to just finish up this region at the end of bar four as well. And I'm going to loop it. So now let's listen to the whole thing. So there you have it. We just made a quick drums, bass and keyboard production on the top of a guitar recording. So from here, this could easily become a song with lyrics or as an instrumental. Additionally, we could also add another contrasting section with a new chord progression. We could add a new section with a melody or we could just keep adding more and more instruments to the arrangement that we have. So to learn more about studying with me, including lesson packages, rates, and to view my calendar, you can click on the link below. And also feel free to drop me a line on my Instagram page or on my website. Talk to you soon.